Can Google, yes, Google spy on custom ROMs like Lineage OS and Calyx OS? If so, is it on the software level, the hardware level, or something else? Today, we're going to figure out if de-googling your Android device truly de-googles it after a quick message from our sponsor. I recently tried an online company focused on reducing food waste, but I never want to share my personal debit cards online for privacy and security reasons, so I utilized privacy.com, a fantastic service that lets you generate single-use debit cards on a per-site basis. Tune in later to find out more about privacy.com and the special promotion we're running with them. First, this claim is massive. That cannot be understated. Not only do many custom ROMs advertise a de-googled experience, and dozens if not hundreds of researchers are analyzing these open source projects for wrongdoing, but many of the claims of how Google spies on these users are massive, like spying through their chips and other more creative avenues. Most of these claims have no evidence for us to base them on. They're all speculation, or tying together misleading truths to make the claim. It's not far-fetched to call this an argument from ignorance, which is a fallacy asserting something must be true as it has not been proven false. So I wanted to do a thought experiment. I will be playing the role of Google for this video. To ask the question, I want to spy on people's phones. How should I do it for maximum effectiveness as a Google employee? All Android ROMs are built on top of the open source Android Open Source Project, or AOSP. This project is open source, but led by Google. Despite this, it's considered pretty much completely de-Googled. Second, Google Play services are added on top of AOSP in order to supply things like the Google Play Store and other functionality found on Android to make the OS feature rich and compatible with everyone's apps. Google Play services are proprietary and are strictly managed by Google. Pretty much any phone you buy that isn't an iPhone likely utilizes Google Play services, which is essentially this black box. This we know and can prove that Google uses to harvest user data. Without further ado, let's get started. AOSP. As Google, the first place I'd start is with AOSP, which is the Android open source project as we all know, which like we covered is what every manufacturer's Android as well as every custom ROM is based on. If I can implement some form of tracking into AOSP, then literally every Android device could be spied on. There's a couple problems though in my way. First, AOSP is open source and built transparently, so I can't just throw in any obvious method of tracking. I could lie about the source code, but that wouldn't really matter considering many ROMs and manufacturers are compiling the actual open source code themselves. The second problem is this isn't something that would be beneficial to our company if literally anyone found out. Make no mistake, if Samsung, OnePlus, Razer, Motorola, or any other company, or the countless researchers reliant on AOSP discovered that we were spying on their customers via a hidden method inside AOSP, they would not be happy and speak up about it right away. So this isn't great. Even if we inject forms of tracking on AOSP secretly, many people will be compiling the open source code anyway, so the best we can do is spy on people through our own pixels that we ship. And even this wouldn't apply to anyone who flashes stock Android or another ROM themselves. It'd only be a matter of time before someone discovered wrongdoing. To summarize, this is false, and there is almost no realistic way for a company like Google to do anything directly malicious with AOSP. And that's really the power of open source, and it's why we encourage it whenever possible. One thing that is possible, though, is Google purposefully making decisions in the development of AOSP that may allow certain forms of tracking to take place from other sources. This can be in the design of how apps are sandboxed, it can be what information apps are allowed to collect about you, how strict the permission management is, what workarounds are offered to gather data, and countless other things involving the development of AOSP. Even this, though, has a good level of oversight given it's all open source. So again, directly no. But it is possible that Google may make decisions that may not be in the best interest of users' privacy and security, and even this has a massive amount of oversight. So AOSP, false. Google Play Services. Next up is Google Play Services. We lucked out because we own and manage the only other mobile app store the world cares about, the Google Play Store. We've designed the store from the ground up to be dependent on Google Play services, which are installed on top of AOSP and found on essentially every phone sold, since everybody needs apps and we own the app store. 
In addition, in addition, in addition to the app ecosystem, we use Google Play services for things like location management, Android Auto, casting, integrations with our other products, and tons of extra things that provide a lot of use cases for our customers. This is perfect for us to target, since likely at least 99% of Android users are using Google Play services on their devices, and it's pretty much a necessity for a lot of people, and we can very safely get away with harvesting user data extensively. There's really nothing to debunk here. Google Play Services is how Google collects user data on Android devices. This has been verified countless times, it's proven, and it's extensive. Those superficial privacy toggles won't save you either. This is also perfect for Google because Google Play Services ship on almost every Android device and are pretty much a requirement for the way most people use their phones, while adding genuinely attractive functionality. This means companies use Google Play services on their devices, Google obviously does on Pixels, and even many custom ROM users to this day use Google Play services as you can install them on custom ROMs as well. Granted, you have a bit more choice involved in the process. The only issue this approach has is it requires a user to be utilizing Google Play services, so this would not be effective towards the tiny, tiny, tiny number of users who opt out, but it's greatly effective against the wide majority of the world. Hardware spy! Just recently, we made the exciting announcement of our new SOC, or system on a chip, built in home. Our own Tensor SOC. We could, in theory, implant a way to spy on users on a hardware level. Some problems. First, this would be incredibly hard to hide on a technical level. Similar to how backdoors and encryption can't be guaranteed to only stay with good guys, our own backdoor and our chips would present a security concern if ever discovered. For a company that genuinely puts a lot of energy into security, this would obviously clash with some of our priorities. Second, if we do avoid detection, we can possibly collect and store user data secretly on the device, but just collecting the data doesn't mean anything. We need to actually receive the data, there has to be a transmission from the phone to us. This presents a new problem of us needing to hide the fact that we are contacting ourselves when we upload data. Literally anyone in the world could install Wireshark on a safe device, an open source network analyzer, and catch their device pinging domains it's not supposed to. This is something even a standard user at home can test, making it almost impossible for us to actually collect the data without being caught. Third, we can only do this for our own devices, significantly limiting the reach of this program and making it even less attractive. Lastly, if this was ever discovered, it would become one of the largest scandals of all time, causing a major hit to our reputation. The risk is also not really for any amazing reward, since there's nothing different that we're not gaining from this data that isn't already collected in Google Play services fairly. The only things we're gaining is the possibility of spying on that tiny fraction of users that don't use Google Play services, and even those users have to be using a device that's supplied by us directly. So no, not only is it technically a ridiculous challenge for Google to overcome having to somehow upload data in a secret way, when literally any user, including yourself, can analyze your phone's web traffic on a totally separate and trusted device, but it's also likely a security risk for Google to implement something like this all at a risk of being caught and for almost no gain. Again, the only thing Google has to gain from this is spying on users who don't use Google Play services and happen to be on the Pixel, which is almost no one in the scheme of things. Other techniques. There are a few more techniques worth considering. First, we could invent a whole new level of communication that isn't 5G or Wi-Fi or anything that users could easily pick up on from our hardware spying. Possibly something on a satellite level for transmission, which the new Tensor ships can communicate with. Problem. First, all the problems already listed for the hardware spying. On top of that, this is turning into an issue that requires ridiculous amounts of funds, massive amounts of people involved who have to be on the same page of the secrecy of the project, massive numbers of researchers who need to be unable to detect things we are currently able to detect thanks to the laws of physics, and not to mention this is all to gather data we already collect via Google Play services. So we're really just doing this to spy on a few people. I think this goes without saying, it's not something that's likely. Second, we could use external services and devices we offer to spy on users indirectly. If a user that doesn't have Google Play services installed on their device installs the Google search app, we can now track them to the extent we can within that app. 
If someone installs another one of our apps, we can go ahead and try to correlate activities between the two using authorized permissions to do what we need to do. This is relatively risk-free, it's done by pretty much the entire tech industry, and doesn't matter to us what device a user is running, de-googled or not. This happens. If you use YouTube on a de-googled phone, you should expect Google to be collecting data about YouTube and everything YouTube has access to. If you buy a Google smart device for your home and sync it to your de-googled phone, you should expect whatever the app is doing and the ties your phone has to that device to be collected. Accessing Google.com on a Googled versus de-Googled device doesn't really change much when it comes to data Google is collecting within that specific session. This highlights the importance of utilizing a well-rounded privacy plan. Using open source alternatives to Google services when you can, changing your search engine, ensuring your browser is blocking privacy invasive trackers, all things that we cover in our Android Privacy and Security Guide, which you should 100% check out if you're looking to take your Android device to the highest level of safety possible. So again, moving to a de-googled phone is just the beginning of being de-googled. You still have to make sure everything that's done on the phone is de-googled as well. To recap, does Google spy on custom ROMs? I would argue no, at least not directly in the way that some people claim. AOSP is open source and is what custom ROMs are built on. Google Play services are normally excluded in custom ROMs, which is Google's main way of collecting its data. Even open source alternatives to Google Play services are massive improvements, though they do sometimes send info if you enable certain features. Hardware spying we covered has no evidence and also is realistically not something that's very possible for Google to do. So what does Google do? Google does spy on the vast majority of Android users via Google Play services and to some extent on custom ROM users and all other devices indirectly when they can. None of this is sci-fi. All of it's verifiable and almost all of it is preventable. This has been extensively studied in numerous research articles you should give a read down in the description. They shed light on how this spying is done and different ways Google and third parties are able to get access to your data. Privacy.com is a phenomenal service where you shop online as you normally would, but with designated cards for each vendor, or you can just do a single use card. You can set limits, really anything. This is great for privacy, giving you a universal way to hide your normal payment information from the sites you shop with online. It's also free to get started. They make money from the normal transaction fees, and the cherry on top is they're running a promo with us for $5 of credit for anyone who signs up with them on privacy.com slash techlore. Check them out below. We cannot recommend them enough. This video actually became a larger project than I anticipated, so here's a very quick addendum before the kind of the final summary of the video, which is also important, so please hear me out. First, you might have noticed that I included a disclaimer for Lineage OS because Lineage OS and some other ROMs actually do have very small callbacks to Google, and normally these are things related to like DNS and other fallbacks. If this is a concern to you, definitely check out some of the guides I left in the description, which are pretty much universal to most ROMs to at least check to see if they're affected. But generally speaking, these aren't really put in malicious it's just that these are very reliable backup methods for people to at least have a working phone. My second point, some of you might be asking which ROM or projects are best for you, especially in light of some recent announcements from another channel. Please bear in mind that many of the myths covered in this video surrounding ROMs came from similar sources that now have their own ROMs. Huh. It's also worth mentioning that phones are just consistently attacked and snake oiled and actually end up being dangerous. So this kind of highlights the importance of sticking with open source evidence-based ROMs recommended by trusted people in the community. I encourage you to discover what all of this means for yourself. I, again, I am not recommending a specific ROM to people in this video. There is no universal single perfect ROM for everyone, and anyone claiming that there is is either out of their mind or just lying to you. Please get your information from multiple sources. And my third point, things can change. This video, for all I know, is going to age terribly because it's going to come out that Google was somehow implementing some invasive new technology that no one was able to pick on for a decade. You know, like this is just not something we can predict, but all we can do is look at the evidence and act accordingly. And that's kind of the inherent risk of taking an evidence-based approach. If you're always on the end of being way too cautious and basing everything on something that isn't true, it doesn't matter if 99% of your predictions never come true. It's the 1% that validate your beliefs in that there is something that's happening that really isn't happening based on all contrary evidence. So again, it's kind of a risky thing for us to do by even taking an evidence-based approach because all people can do is eventually disprove it. But that is the risk we're taking and I hope that people are aware of the limitations in that uh, approach that we're taking. The last thing I'll leave you with. 
There are people who I believe should genuinely be concerned about things like hardware spying, and they are the tippity toppity Edward Snowdens of the world in the most unfortunate circumstances. If this isn't you, which if you're asking if it's you, it isn't, find something better to worry about. Being concerned about secret Google chip spying while you leave a comment on YouTube already demonstrates a complete lack of understanding of threat modeling. Put together a threat model. We have a great guide on it and it'll help you figure out what to give a fuck about and what not to give a fuck about. You only have so many fucks to give in the world, not to mention the privacy world, and you need to prioritize properly for the best results. For almost everyone watching this video, the fear of a secret Google chip spying on you with a custom ROM should land on the don't give a fuck list. So go out there and enjoy not only your degoogled ROM, but also your degoogled apps, browsers, search engines, and everything else that you can do. This video has been a ton of fun and I wanted to make sure that our patrons who support our work get a necessary shout out. Their names are on the bottom of the screen and we couldn't make this concept without them. Join them on that list and support us at patreon.com slash techlore and we'll see you next time on Techlore.